Hello and welcome to a truly special episode of the Offside Museums podcast. Um, my name is Oken Dibe. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of my co-host, Emeka Onyagwa. I know that a bunch of you have been asking uh, what happened to us, what happened to the podcast. We're still very much around. It's just that uh, my co-host and I have been doing a lot of traveling, both within uh, the U.S. and uh, in this case, outside of the U.S. So we haven't had uh, a time when our um, um, when we both could get together and talk about our favorite subject, which is Nigeria. But today is a key day. It's the day that Nigerians go to the polls. So we thought that we should come up with a quick summative statement. And so the subject of today's podcast, the episode of for today, is in, as the Latin will say, Nigeria quo vadis. Uh, it's a way of saying which way, Niger. All right. So we welcome you to this very short, but sharp, hopefully penetrating, summative episode of the Offside, of the Offside Museums podcast. You're welcome. Yeah, great. So today, tomorrow is uh, D Day for Nigeria. Actually, um, today, actually well, today, Be yeah. because the thing is, we're, we're coming out tomorrow. Oh, okay, yeah. So today, yeah, so I mean, it's today. It is D Day for Nigeria. It's yes. the elections. Mm -hmm. It is quite likely eight years of a leader, possibly. Depends on what happens. It's very mm -hmm. unlikely you unseat somebody after four years. Mm -hmm. And the country has been in a terrible eight years coming out of a previous, ter well, previous awful six years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. coming out of a tumultuous eight years. <laughs> 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 you get the drift, right? Yes. Drift. Yes. So yeah. it's here. Um, and yeah. What, so are, what me, are your thoughts? Let, let me, let me sort of tell you what I'm going to look for. Uh, in today's elections. So there are several key things to look for. I want to look at Nigeria security uh, agencies, and I mean the police, the DSS, and other domestic security agencies. I'm going to be looking at whether they play an impartial, objective role to create a secure environment for Nigerian voters to then exercise their votes. I'm also going to be looking at uh, President Mohamed Buhari's government. Is that government going to live up to its promise to have a level playing field? Uh, you and I know that in Nigeria, the president of the country has overwhelming control of the security apartheid in the country. So, is Buhari going to restrain himself from supporting one candidate or another um, in order to ensure? Um, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, Buhari could support a candidate. That's within his rights as a citizen. But I'm saying, as a government, is this government going to refrain from stacking the deck in favor of one candidate or increasing the odds against one or two or three candidates. So that's another key factor that I, I'm, I'm going to be looking at. Then I'm going to be looking at the Nigerian military. So for the first time, not no, not actually not for the first time, but perhaps for the first time in Nigeria's history, the military has always been deployed in elections. But this seems to be the first time when there is a nationwide spread of the military. Um, um, different cities, different states are reporting military presence. So it's key, I think, for us as observers, for the international community, for Nigerians, to see if the military, again, will serve to supplement the capacity of the police and other security agencies to maintain law and order to enable Nigerian citizens to go and vote without molestation, without harassment, and without violence. Finally, 
actually not finally. I'm also going to be looking uh, most crucially at INEC. Has INEC, is INEC going to make a commitment that fulfills its promise to be an impartial umpire? Um, you and I have raised questions in the past about the ways in which uh, voters were registered, about the number of registration of voters that were cancelled in different geopolitical zones of the country, and that these cancellations, these voided registrations of voters, tended to be concentrated in the south-south and in the southeast of the country. So that's an open question. So, but Nigerians are going to be watching tomorrow. We are definitely are going to be watching. The international community is watching to see if INEC keeps up at least a semblance of impartiality in the way that it conducts the elections. Finally, we look at the political parties. Are the political parties going to keep their understanding to conduct themselves um, with responsibility, not to sponsor thugs, and therefore not to foment violence? Now, if all these things hold, if there is seen to be a credible pro uh, process in uh, today's elections in Nigeria, then I will say that whoever becomes the president-elect would suggest something about the direction. You know? So the question, Kuo Vadis, what's the direction? Nigeria, where are you going? And I think that who we elect uh, will say something about where Nigerian voters want the country to go. And that's a different question which I'll come to. So, But I want you to respond and see if there are other indicators that you're going to be looking at in addition to the ones that I've enumerated. Yeah, I think you spelled, you spelled out um, you know, key things in terms of what direction would be, how free the, how the election is going to be. It's not implausible to have a level of free elections in Nigeria. We've seen something close to that in 93, which was a novel system in terms of option E4, which is what mm -hmm. it was called. It was public voting, a little bit mm -hmm. uncomfortable, but, you know, there was a level of you stand here, you, who do you vote for? You stand there, you stand there. But everybody knew the results at their polling units. Mm -hmm. And they had, they had a spread of, um, they had a spread of INEC office, well, not INEC, electoral NEC, I believe, at that point in time. The National Electoral Commission offices, which are very close by, even in rural areas, to be able to collect a lot of those votes. You had mobilization then, uh, MAMSA, uh, Jerry Ghana, Professor Jerry Ghana at that point mm -hmm. in time, who was very, uh, key in, in, in what they were doing. I, I think that was very fair. Yeah. Um, the first thing I'd say going into it is, you know, was it not about, being called Fedeco? Was it called Fedeco? Fedeco I, I think I can't remember. So <laughs> yeah. if anybody, yes. I, it was and Fedeco. then Professor Humphrey Wosu. Wosu. Yes. Humphrey Wosu was uh, this thing, and he had Humphrey Wosu as the, I remember him announcing mm -hmm. it not too far from where I lived at that time. Mm -hmm. And it seemed so surreal because it was just down the road where they ended up canceling. They canceled mm -hmm. the, uh, the results, and I was like, not too far away at when, when it happened. So for me, it's not a question of, first thing I would look at is not a question of international community. People are like, well, international community. I'm like, I don't, I don't feel this is an international. It, I've never felt, oh, well, maybe when I was younger, maybe, but I don't feel it's an international community issue. I think it's Nigerians, yeah. pretty young people. Mm -hmm. We're a very young population. Everybody's, you know, we, we are bound to inherit the future because mm -hmm. of our young population and that of some other countries as well. Um, yes. We have a very fertile and nice um, birth rate as well. But a young population in itself might end up being an albatross for some of these countries. Not, mm -hmm. And hopefully we won't be the ones, or hopefully none of them will be, but it's actually quite possible and quite likely. So it's young people who need to be there, need to sit down there. The voting is 8.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. to, I believe, 2.30 p.m which the electoral commissioner has said is going to wait there to collect the results. So that's critical. They haven't done as much mobilization as um, I personally experienced growing up 
with the Humphrey Wolves of the world. Mm-hmm. But I think they've done to some level. And I think a lot of people take it seriously. I think a lot of people are in dire situations. Um, a lot of the country is in a situation where in a, in a, in a, in a scene where so many people are just lost. And yes. I made the mistake of even, well, I'm going to mistake. I was looking through videos today and I, I was seeing all kinds of mob violence, uh, mob justice. Mm-hmm. You know, and people claimed they were from various things that had to do with the elections. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's always been there. It's even just more sadistic. So the question now is, how is it going to play out? Which yes. what, what question we've been talking about, mm-hmm. how is it going to play out? Absolutely. If, you, if we know <laughs> how it's going to play out, We'll, I we'll think be billionaires we, if, we, we, if we could tell. We would be billionaires. <laughs> we can see. I I could accurately tell you who is going to win mm-hmm. if we know how it's going to play out. That's right. And I think it doesn't matter what you think of who would win in that kind of situation, like you've said. It just matters the fact that there will be a new level of empowerment for this young population that keeps coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. where they could sit down and understand your vote matters. And that's mm-hmm. that's the key. That and is yes, key. It does okay. sound like, you know, the older parties wouldn't have a say, but if mm-hmm. it plays out the way it should play out, mm-hmm. the way, and I prefix it by saying, I am not, I don't believe any country has rapidly developed mm-hmm. based on all my research, based on, I've got your research if you want, on direct representation. Mm-hmm. So I, I know, I don't feel direct representation. And when I say direct representation, one man, one vote, even America doesn't have that, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, till tomorrow. So, yeah. and not as the UK, actually, funny enough, till mm-hmm. tomorrow, they don't have direct representation either. So most of these countries do not function by direct, rep- but it's the system for the selections. Mm-hmm. Is that what, what we would want? You no, know, mm-hmm. we've said that multiple times that there needs to be a restructuring of the country. But it is mm-hmm. what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. So looking out for it, um, we'll see how that's, the that's list out. today. What's going to happen oh, today? Sorry, sorry, I keep saying. Well, what's going to happen today? So mm-hmm. looking out for it, I keep saying, um, you've said a whole bunch of the metrics you're looking at and all, and what's going to happen in terms of the military presence. We're seeing a lot of it, um, a massive amount. We've been seeing a build up for over a week. We, to be fair to Buhari. He doesn't seem to, even as of today, put his thumb on the scale for his party. Mm-hmm. To be fair to the guy. Yeah. Right. Even in terms of soft, what you might term as soft power, hard power is that. Mm-hmm. The, but who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Like, like I've said before, his party's presidential candidate has a history of doing things a certain way. And he's had his people in government for eight years. So, um, government in Nigeria is power capture, mm-hmm. capture power. That's it. And those people have been in government for a while. So mm-hmm. again, we'll see how it, it plays itself out. I do hope it plays itself out. Well, I do hope uh, the military people will be, will not let themselves be used, um, over at least not. Not the majority of them. I know they'll always, nobody, there's mm-hmm. no perfect system. So there will be yeah. stories here and there. Yeah. I do hope that plays itself out. I do hope people take, it's a Saturday, which is something yeah. that I would wish that America had. I do mm-hmm. wish, I do hope people would stay there and make sure their votes, that their votes are counted. counted. Okay. Very similar to so, before. So, so absolutely. So for me, um, there are, there are things to watch out for. Um, I think that this is the uh, first election where young people in Nigeria are tuned in and pumped up, okay? Uh, they have been pumped up for a while, and they are pumped up um, specifically, uh, I, I would say, for the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi. Um, now, if the elections tomorrow are free and fair, incredible. Nigeria has a dominant demographic of young people. If young people come out 
in the numbers that would suggest that they are going to um, uh, come out in, I think that is going to be a very huge day uh, for Peter Obi. Now, but before I get to Peter Obi, I'd like to, because it's key to emphasize that an election need not produce something that you or I or anybody likes. When an election is free and fair, people reserve the right to produce an idiot as their leader. Okay? And we must respect that. And that's what I tell people. If you show me that an election has been free and fair and people chose, you know, some kind of donkey to be their president, I will not respect the donkey, but I'll respect the people's right. I will, I will defend the people's right to choose a donkey to run their lives. Having said that, I insist that the act outcome of today's election is going to say, again, given that all the indices that I enumerated at the beginning uh, hold constant, then I'm going to say that the election today will say something profound about the state of mind of Nigeria, what I call Nigeria quo vadis, or Niger which way. Okay, so if Nigeria would choose today, after today's election, if Nigerians choose uh, Atiku Abubakar, former vice president of Nigeria for eight years under Olushe Guma Basanjo, it will seem, it will suggest, not seem actually, it will suggest that Nigerians look with, nostal not, with nostalgia to the 16 years that the PDP, People's Democratic Party, ran Nigeria. That will be a moment of historical amnesia because in the 18 years that the PDP was in office, the PDP was massively unpopular especially among the, uh, what you might call the intelligentsia, the, um, the, the enlightened parts of the country. Um, Obasanjo, for much of the fascination that people have for him now, was a disaster as president. Obasanjo made certain key commitments, including to guarantee Nigerians regular uninterrupted power. He didn't deliver on that. Atiku was pivotal in the running of the economy, especially in the first term of the Abbasanjo Atiku presidency administration. Um, so if we chose Atiku, it will mean that Nigerians are saying, we want those 16 years, which were not particularly stellar years. If anything, they were mediocre to disastrous that we wanted back. Now, if Nigerian voters choose Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress, then it will say, in my view, it will suggest that Nigerians are saying, we haven't suffered enough. Um, you, you've been serving us suffering only for breakfast and lunch. We want suffering breakfast, lunch, dinner, and we also want it as dessert and we want it in between meals. So just bring us more suffering, bring it on. The reason I say this is that Balatinubu was key and has boasted that he single-handedly delivered Buhari after a series of failure on Buhari's part to achieve the presidency. Balatinubu said, I delivered him. Balatinubu has said openly that he wants to be a continuation of Buhari's administration. Buhari's administration is a nightmare to Nigerians. So if Nigerians would, in their wisdom, choose Bola Tinubu, I'll respect that wisdom. But what it says to me is that Nigerians are saying everything that has gone wrong in Nigeria in the last eight years, okay, the economic crisis, uh, the insecurity in the country, the uh, violence that is generated in almost every sector, sector in the country, the, um, the free activities of, of herdsmen who uh, sack communities and so on, that we actually want all of those, but we want them uh, multiplied by several factors. Now, 
I think that the only candidate, major candidate, let us say, whose election is going to boost the Nigerian spirit is Peter Obi. Now, I say this as somebody who has been critical of Peter Obi in the past, very, very critical of him in the past. And I am sanguine. I, I'm sort of, I'm not one who believes that in a, a Peter Obi presidency will solve all, all of Nigeria's problems. But I think that this is what Peter Obi's presidency does. That Peter Obi's presidency is going to mean that young people see themselves as being in the room of power, no longer outside the corridor or sort of in, on the margins. It's also going to mean Peter B is the only candidate who is likely to mobilize the expertise, the great talent that Nigeria has outside of the country. In other words, the diasporic uh, sector of the Nigerian population. I think if Peter B wins, there'll be a sense of hope and that sense of hope is going to buy Nigeria a little more time. If Peter B doesn't win, but one of the other two major candidates um, becomes the, the winner of the elections, I think that Nigeria has no... I don't think that you're going to see much celebration on the streets. I think that is going to be seen, both within Nigeria and outside of Nigeria, that it's going to be business as usual a recycling and perhaps an intensification of suffering. And, uh, but we're going to know um, um, in a matter of hours, maybe uh, after today's vote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll see what happens. Um, I think the energy is in one direction for sure. Uh, I've said that for a while. I don't think it's about liking or not liking the energy. It's just what it is. It doesn't solve, it's not going to, it's not likely to address Nigeria's structural problems, which mm -hmm. is, which has crippled, crippled the state. It's not mm -hmm. even a country, just mm -hmm. a state. I think it, it, there was a country that have is an apt title. It's a state. Um, mm -hmm. it's crippled, it's crippled the state, crippled development. It's, yeah. It, I, 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 the only way, I, I mean, in, in a way, I'll differ from you in saying it, it means it goes that deep because a lot of people will vote based on acting lines. Yeah. No question. No question. Um, a lot, a question, the, 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 the question now we have is do we have enough people who want a positive future who it's, who sit down and are looking at the country? Mm -hmm. they, they've tasted what's happened, at least in this administration, probably beyond, mm -hmm. because we have a very young population, 16 alone to 65 in Nigeria is 654% of the population. So, mm -hmm. And the next large segment is 14 and under in Nigeria. It's 45, 44% of the population. So mm -hmm. 65 and older is less than 3% of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have a very low life expectancy. So... Mm -hmm. It's sitting down. It's like okay. It's there are going to be a lot of people that are good for different reasons. There will be. I was watching a, an American public commentator saying, talking about how in Africa people vote to deny other ethnic groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm quoting him, it's just I don't even need mm -hmm. to quote him. I just, a lot mm -hmm. of people will vote That's, to deny other ethnic mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. They would want to tag one campaign as something or the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think when it comes to two candidates, at least they've tried not to cast themselves as champions of this thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll say they've tried not to. Their people mm -hmm. all around have done a good job on their own, whether good mm -hmm. or bad. Peter Obi and Balatinobu's people, ethnic people, have done a, overall a good job. Whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. um, whether you support the Igbo intelligentsia, they've done a good job. The Igbo regular people to have done a good job. The Igbo, um, what was the word I'd use for them? <laughs> the Igbo, uh, uh, members of the, val of the val different the violent struggles. <laughs> the <masses. laughs> These people have done also a good job. Mm. Obviously, I was watching a video today where they were, they were terrorizing communities that were trying to vote. Yeah. So they've all done a good job of saying, these two people are not 
ethnic national candidate. Now on his left foot, them doing a good job still left for people to say, hey, this guy, because I've had, I've had conversations with people and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to vote for this guy because I'm like, I don't feel Tinubu is a Yoruba candidate, to be mm-hmm. honest. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Yoruba intelligence has, they've done an overall decent job. Um, even the ones that support him have done an overall mm-hmm. decent job of being like, look, man, uh, this is not what we want. Um, mm-hmm. and 100%, I don't think above all, I think the Igbo people as a whole mm-hmm. have done a fantastic job of being like, this is not an Igbo candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're supporting Peter, we were supporting him. Um, this and I think could, Obi has also been explicit in making that point, right? Yes. That yeah. don't vote for me because I'm an Igbo man. And you and I have made that point on this podcast. Um, yep. We have said that we don't want an Igbo uh, president. We want a good president. Okay. Yeah. Um, if he happens to be Igbo, good. Uh, if a good president, I would think somebody made a great analogy the other day. Um, an Igbo guy, I think on Twitter or something. And he said, if you think that I'm supporting Peter Obi because he, he's Igbo, he said, if you gave me Osibanjo and Oju Zakalo, he said, I won't <laughs> think, I won't think for a second before I support Osibanjo. You know, so, so the perception then is that, you know, Obi has, whether you like him or not, Obi has set himself apart in the campaigns. Obi has actually elevated the tone of the campaigns. Uh, Tinubu, on the other hand, Tinubu particularly, um, is clearly ill, but mentally and physically, you know, mm-hmm. you can see that the man is deteriorated and diminished. Okay. So, and Nigerians have had a history going back to a batch of sick men, physically sick men who preside over the country, a country that is also almost almost chronically and malignantly sick. So you need a doctor by the bedside who is attentive, who has the energy. So we've had a badger. We've had, um, um, uh, what's his name, Yaradua, who died in office. Mm-hmm. We've had Buhari, who was in and out of hospital, especially in his first term. If we yep. were to choose Balatinubu, there is no question in my mind, unless there's a miracle, that Balatinubu is going to spend a substantial part of his time as president abroad seeking uh, treatment. Okay? So that would be Nigerians saying, we're very, very sick. Our country is profoundly sick. So we want a sick man to be our minder, to be the caretaker. I mean, if that's what uh, they want, yeah. I, I yeah. just... And if that's what they want... Yeah. If that's what it, it they want. It just says something. It just says this is what they want. Yeah. yeah. If that's yeah. what they want. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, um, I think people should have supported, should support. And no matter who wins, um, try to support mm-hmm. um, as much as you can. Because mm-hmm. if some of these guys win, I don't think your support, especially those that live overseas, I don't think your support matters mm-hmm. because it's all about state capture. Mm-hmm. But support and the country. Go vote. I'm telling mm-hmm. you who to vote for. Yeah. My preference would be there was a suspension for a year and everybody should go about and figure out how, what, what might be the best idea and try and adopt something and see how it runs. Mm-hmm. That would, that would be my akin to what happened in 1999 when we had the opportunity or even at the end of a batch of, uh, of just tenure when we had the opportunity. Same thing, uh, IBB's, um, eight years had the opportunity so um I, I think a lot of people i think maybe if that kind of opportunity happened again maybe the result might be different but then again mm. there's also saying only a mad person does the same thing over and over again as a country the same thing that's failed and you yes, do it, uh, as a country yeah. we, we can sit down and be like but people should go out there and vote i would hope at the end of the day people are engaged and nigeria is not a vote and handoff we're not mm-hmm. America or Britain or mm-hmm. I mean, I was, in, I was in London the other day and uh, it's messy out there right now. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, messy yeah, to, yeah. it's messy to some degree out there. So, mm-hmm. you know, go out there, vote. And there's no denying just the facts of, of, of what we have. We have a young population. We have candidates who have spent money. We have, there's crippling, there's a money crisis in the country. Yeah, People are angry. 
I don't I think it works out well for the elections overall. I think it does. I don't I'm not happy that people are suffering. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I'm not extorting it. I'm like ah, people are suffering as good. No, it's just I just we just if we if we're being honest, we know what will happen. Because Nigeria is a cash and carry country. We've had videos yes. of people coming out with 50, 70, 80, 90, I've seen 150 million naira, which is probably somewhere around maybe three, four, five hundred thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, well, maybe a little bit less, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's going, it, it, that kind of money is, is walking around America and offering people, which, you know, offering people maybe offering somebody like a thousand dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars to vote for them mm-hmm. somewhere, and I'll put that. Yeah, I, that two thousand. You you go to mm-hmm. rural mm-hmm. counties mm-hmm. in America. Yeah, you could offer somebody two thousand dollars, and I think most the majority of people would think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, because one way or another, they offer you that kind of money in terms mm-hmm. of well, giving That's you right. stuff to vote for you, which has always been there, right? So mm-hmm. it's massive. Most of these guys don't care. They're all about power capture. Mm-hmm. I was out there in London with my with a lot of people and a lot of them were supporting one candidate. Mm-hmm. And when you ask them, they are they're like, Yeah, I'm, I'm supporting this guy because if he gets into office, I know I'm going back to Nigeria to occupy oh, my office. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my boys are like, Well, oh, yeah, you my, know what? I'm yes. like, you're still my friend, man. Yes, you know, yes. And they were trying to look at me like, Well, I'm seeing the energy is <laughs> this way. I'm not telling you to vote that way. I'm telling you energy is this way. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you the person you're trying to support is like, mm-hmm. but I'm like, you know, I didn't have a day. I understand it. You live mm-hmm. in a high tax country. Yes. And it, it, most of these countries are not what they think. Some of my, a lot of my friends that have, they have kids that are even like teenagers. So it's like, look, man, I have to go there. I'm going to mm-hmm. make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. My kids are about to go to college yeah. and well, all that. The, so yeah, the thing is that there is, uh, less and less money to be made in Nigeria and more and more people who are desperate to pick off, uh, what's left. You know, the country is in dire economic straits. It's not like the days when Nigeria was making a ton of money from oil exports. You know, it's like these days, um, the NMPC is remitting very little. Uh, to the federation account and, uh, over much of last year, the federal government has had to print money to meet even its recurrent obligations, you know, and, uh, even, um, um, some governors have openly stated that, you know, the government prints money to, to share with the states and, and all. So the, the thing is, do we recognize the dire situation? Uh, that the country is in and do we want not necessarily a solution, but to have the hope that there will be, uh, some thinking in the direction of a solution. I said, uh, at an event that I did, uh, two or three days ago for, uh, Carlton University, um, uh, a kind of webinar on the elections. And I said that Nigeria has been designed to produce failure. And so, uh, whoever gets elected, even if the person who gets elected means to perform, he has to, uh, find a way to undermine the system that is designed to produce failure. He has to find a way to pick men and women of particular profound metal spine and imagination um, who want a place in history, uh, who want to establish legacy, not to buy legacy estates and so on. And um, I tell you something. Um, I was listening to Aisha Yesufu a few days ago. Again, she and I uh, participated in um, this uh, webinar at, uh, uh, put up by Carlton University. And she was proposing that the difference in this year, in today's elections, is that there are voters who cannot and will not be bribed. And I hope that that's true. Um, it's in contrast with the conversation that I had with a friend yesterday, where he, in, in a sense, he was repeating to me 
all the verities of past elections. He said all these young men and women who are making noise on social media that once you show them a little bit of money, they are going to wilt, you know. And he was suggesting um, that uh, some of the sort of the dis the the um, uh, um, the the dissatisfaction that we're seeing in some pockets of the minority ethnic groups in the northern part of the country. He's saying that in, in the end they are going to vote uh, with a core. Uh, Fulani uh, uh, interests because that's the way they go, including Christians in the north and so on. So, so all of these, uh, the key thing for me is that uh, the elections are seen to be orderly. They're, 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 it's seen that there are no disruptions. It's seen that the apartheid of the state, uh, security, the military, um, the governmental, uh, and INEC ultimately as well as the political parties, show restraint and show a measure of impartiality, uh, a commendable measure of impartiality, so that it is seen that the process is free, is fair, and is credible. And if all these things are true, then today's election is going to give us the president that is going to make a statement about Nigerians. And I'd like to end by summing up. If Balatinubu gets elected. I think that Nigerians will be saying that we love the suffering we've endured over the last eight years and please can you times it by several factors. And they would also be saying that they want a sick man to run a sick nation. If they vote the PDP and Tiku, Nigerians will be saying that those 16 years in which the PDP squandered the country's resources are so sweet and seductive that they want those 16 years to roll back but with more squand squander mania uh, unleashed. If they vote Peter Obi, they will be voting for a candidate I think that who is going to inspire the young people and who is going to excite Nigerians in the diaspora, the expertise of the country to perhaps lend a hand to reshape in the country. Peter Obi doesn't have the answers but I think that what Peter Obi can do is that he's going to attract the people who have the answers in different sectors of the country. And I think that there will be a confidence in the international community and lending agencies uh, to invest more in Nigeria. So that's yeah. my last word about yeah. today's election. I would just say, I don't know how it's about how it plays out, um, million dollar question, but I'd say if you, I mean, I don't, I don't think is that, I think if you say that would be the conclusion, cool, but there are a lot of factors that go into which going to how people vote, really going to how people vote. Um, prejudice. It, I, I had a debate and I, and I, I've said it here a bunch of times. I've had a, I had a debate last week and people were telling me about racism. I'm like, I don't know what racism is. I do know what tribalism is though. And I think it's a million times worse and people argued and argued and somebody said, you know, Hey, so some guys back me in that chat. They're like, look, man, if you take the numbers, if you take the fact that most black people live in Africa, what is going to affect you is tribalism. Even when you're overseas, the worst things that would happen to you in a lot of countries will be tribal. Um, so a lot of people, it's a, it's a big thing. It's a, it's a religion in it of itself. The tribal supremacy. Um, it's not something to be understated, underestimated or joked with. It's a serious thing. So uh, it's, it's a lot more complex how to end up, mm -hmm. but I'd mm -hmm. say the question is if, if a article wins, it's now a question of selling off Nigeria. Um, obviously, you know, his former PA talked about how his kids want to be, and it sounds about right. What was probably going to happen. So it's about selling off Nigeria. How much can Nigeria withstand? How much can Nigeria withstand? In, um, in, uh, in, in every second of a Atiku regime, how much can it, how much, if it can even withstand any of it, I, th mm -hmm. I think it just probably would be teetering on, um, would be, would be, would be on the, on the edge of, of just being a sectional country, a sectional country, a warring country. Um, a tenable win is just essentially state capture. 
like my friend I was talking about, I'm sure if Tinubu wins, he'll be in Nigeria with, with a nice position, right? So it's the first level of your state capture, share stuff. The country is going to, yes, so how long, how much can people sit down and how much can people sit down in that country and endure for the multiplication of what is happening right now in the country? Um, if I'm a B wings, it'd be interesting for this fact because it would be something fresh and fresh in a regard that all of a sudden, all this, oh, social media campaign, you don't wait this thing on Facebook, oh, this, oh, that, oh, that, that conversation, which should never be, would end. The new era, the new generation, a lot of people, young people communicate in a different way. And it would mean you just can't suppress that voice. It gives reality to the older people on how that voice now works. And it gives power to the younger people. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a whole new dynamic play out in Nigeria. You're going to see a struggle between the older ones that will try and shut it down, try and control their, inter their internet space, and the younger ones that will try and do things. So we're already seeing that kind of dynamic in terms of the money in terms of how Nigeria is, if not in on almost any metrics, top three in terms of cryptocurrency usage. We're seeing that dynamic. We're seeing dynamic in terms of usage of, of social media platforms. So if that translates to action on the ground, it would be a very, very interesting and intriguing way moving forward. Because you would have people that, it, you don't have all kinds of distance, but you're going to have even the young people sitting down and being like, if our voice matters, we're going to use it. Good. And it's be interesting to see that happen. So Good. that's the way I see it. I just see. Yeah. But it, it will be interesting what happens today um, in yeah. terms of the voting and how it, how it plays out. Yeah. So we thank you very much uh, to uh, listeners for uh, joining us in uh the episode today this uh pivotal uh extraordinarily important episode that coincides with the election uh general elections holding in nigeria today please if you are in the country and you have your pvc go out and cast your vote and then if you can stay behind and defend that vote good luck to nigeria good luck stay behind defend it even though we're not there, the vote matters. <laughs> we're gonna defend it with our with our voices. Yes, yeah. we will. All right. So All right. have a brilliant, brilliant day, and please do join us uh, in another few days uh, as we do an analysis of what transpired today. Thanks.